Hi everyone, it is December 9, 2017. I want to point out in this video that there are so many people still suffering the consequences of Harvey and of the fires only eight weeks ago in Northern California. There are so many who cannot recover from these catastrophic weather events, catastrophic fire events, family sleeping in car gets hotel room ahead of cold night. There are there are good people who are donating to families to survive the cold that is now in Houston. They donating so that these families can have hotel rooms. So this article was posted two days ago. The possibility of snow in Houston may sound like fun, but it's bad news for some Houstonians who were hit particularly hard by Hurricane Harvey. I want to say that the use of these words like some, FEMA received over one million applications for assistance. That means that over one million had damage to their homes. That means that the numbers that mainstream media are reporting are so low that it's frightening. And when you think about all of those who have had flood, ha had their homes flooded, they not being able to get back into their homes, they needing their homes to be rebuilt, renovated, the mold, all of the sewage in the waters, in the flood waters, in their homes now. So, what is happening to countless numbers of people? We're only hearing in a mainstream media report on the few or the sum or the resilient. I want to know what's happening to all of those people that we're not hearing about. So many families in one Northeast Houston neighborhood have been <clears throat> waiting for repairs. They still sleeping in tents, campers, even their cars. In the meantime, it's insurmountable. I don't think there are words to describe how great the need is. They had little to begin with and Harvey made sure they had nothing. So one of those people who lost everything, a Jared Thomas, all he has left is his car. He said once it started getting cold and raining and stuff like that, we decided to get in our car because we didn't have any type of way to keep warm. He has a four-year-old son. His son's mom, they all slept in their car. It was very scary and emotional. It was stressful because we have to go through this in the holidays and sad because we have a four-year-old son. So there are families now who fortunately are able to spend the next week in a hotel thanks to volunteers within their community. Communities, my God, they have to come together and help one another. People have lost everything. Their clothing, everything in their homes, their homes. And Houston residents may need to raise homes after Harvey. So, I posted on Kafka Winston World several videos showing that people will find it very difficult to rebuild after these weather events, after fires destroy their homes because of all of the new rules and regulations and the difficulty uh, processing permits for them, all of the new rules and regulations that have been passed in virtually every state having to do with climate change. So they purposely bring in these weather events with the technology that they use to create them, to modify them, to intensify them. They're deliberate. 
They are man-made. They destroy people's lives with these lives, their businesses, their homes, and then they make it extraordinarily difficult. The expense alone, the expense alone, you know, to raise your property, to raise your home. All right, there are a few people who would say, oh, it's just a couple of thousand dollars. Well, I would say to those people that they have not been following the news over the recent years that so many Americans now have no savings and can't afford anything but to pay their bills. And those are the lucky Americans if they have enough to pay their bills. So it's all a deliberate plan to reduce the population, to uh, bring these people into areas where, you know, if you can't afford another car, right? Okay, your car has been flooded by Hurricane Harvey. No flood insurance for cars. But you need a car to get to work. But your home has been flooded. And then the family sits down and starts having discussions. Perhaps we should sell to the uh, to the that vulture who comes in to buy up properties, pennies on a dollar. Maybe we should just sell it and then move to where we can get public transportation. I mean, it's really a brilliant scenario when you think about it. We'll move to an area where we don't need a car. The mega cities within the mega regions, exactly what the United Nations wants everybody to do. Their plan, Agenda 2030. If you don't know anything about that plan, I suggest that you do some research. All you have to do is put in the search bar, United Nations Agenda 2030, and it will come up. But on Kafka Winston World, I showed legislation passed by Congress mandating FEMA to retrofit, to, to, to mandate those who get flood insurance that they retrofit their homes. And I showed on the FEMA website, not this page, but this is the FEMA website. This is a FEMA.gov page elevating your home, retrofitting methods. So it's going to be very costly for an awful lot of people to rebuild in Houston, but um, there will be so many people who won't survive this. The homeless population which bizarre, it was very bizarre to see right after Harvey that the homeless population went down. I read mainstream media's articles about the homeless population in Houston had gone down. And I thought to myself, how did it go down? Because homelessness now with Harvey, you'll see the numbers surging. And what we are doing to the homeless in our country is so unbelievably immoral. So many cities criminalizing homelessness now. It's uh, heartbreaking to see this, but the Texas ACLU is now suing Houston, saying their new rules are criminalizing the homeless. And they don't have enough shelters for people to find a bed. So if there's no beds available, well, then they have to be on the streets. And the ACLU claims that the mayor is making it very difficult for the homeless population. Um, there's two new ordinances in the city that just recently passed which further criminalizes homelessness. 
The two ordinances target the homeless population. The new prohibition on camping in public and another making panhandling illegal. These are departures from other policies that take a more compassionate approach to reducing homelessness. So when you have a crisis, when you have a catastrophic event, when you have a surge in homelessness, and then the city comes in and passes new prohibitions, making it illegal for people to ask for help from others on the street, making it illegal to camp in public spaces, what are these families to do? What are these individuals to do? And I just want to point out with this article, Houston officials criticize federal restraining order, say cleanup coming to encampment. And as I was reading this article, I just thought to myself, you know something? We are cruel here as Americans to do this to the homeless population. Now, I know in New York City, back in the 80s, some uh, stores, restaurants, they would have signs on the windows, on the doors. Public uh, bathrooms for customers only, and they were very adamant about keeping the homeless out of their bathrooms. Now, I understand, you know, that there's a, a lot of difficulty. You have a restaurant, you have a, a, a store, and due to the circumstances of the individual, they're not too clean. And yes, if you have a lot of homeless coming in and using the bathrooms, you might have a lot of re uh, customers refuse to go to your establishment. Okay, well, is, is the answer to never provide what the homeless need and just shun them and pass laws that make them illegal? You know, homelessness, illegal. Criminalizing homelessness. No, that is not the answer. The answer is for everybody within their communities to come together and to create a community where there are resources for people to get the help that they need and for communities to come together to begin to shun all of the people who are so incredibly greedy and self-centered and create a community with affordable housing. But we're not going to get there when the federal government dictates to states and local communities what they can and cannot do. And when you have government officials, local government officials, passing laws that are so uh, just grossly immoral, it reflects the community. It reflects who lives in that community. So, yes, all individuals within their communities have to come together. Otherwise, otherwise, homelessness is just going to continue to surge. And when it does surge, and when you have the homeless that have found one little space where they can stay and set up camps, but you have no public bathrooms and you have nothing available, then you have those places that could turn into a real mess. Hell, let them stay and just provide porto potties for them. And then the community can work on uh, further plans to help the homeless. A few months after Harvey's, Harvey, Houston's long recovery quietly heads inside. The only reason why I included this was 
More than 9,000 city residents are adjusting to life in hotel rooms. The steady soundtrack of radio ads offering cash for damaged homes is evidence of the private money that is turning once stable, now gutted neighborhoods into spectacular paradises. Yes, these vulture capitalists, these vulture um, investors, you know, that, that go in and offer to buy people's homes, pennies on the dollar, after these disasters. We have FEMA buying people's homes. All of this is designed to further implement Agenda 21, Agenda 2030, but it is also designed to take neighborhoods that were once stable and gentrify those neighborhoods into neighborhoods where the more affluent live. But what are those Americans to do that then can't afford? Then you have more and more homelessness. In addition to the emergency housing aid, the federal government, strained by competing disasters in South Florida and Puerto Rico, has paid out more than $4.2 billion in flood insurance claims associated with Harvey. But some particularly those who have the least complain about weeks-long delays and backup bills. The government's bills lie ahead. Houston schools open within a month of the storm, a recovery that far exceeds expectations. After more than 200 of the district's 287 campus campuses were damaged, the repair costs will be exorbitant, probably exceeding $2 million, $200 million including the likely need to rebuild at least four schools from the ground up. I did a video posted on Kafka Winston World. Donations from Americans with taxpayer monies coming from the federal government exceeded $8.1 billion. $8.1 billion so the flood insurance claims $4.2 billion. Oh, I need to pause this just to show you one other thing. FEMA is collecting $1.024 billion. Their reinsurance. The U.S. Federal Emergency Management Agency has begun the process of collecting on its two uh, uh, 2017 reinsurance program after claims for Hurricane Harvey's flooding after surpassing its retention due to the impact of the storms and anticipates recovering the full 1.024 billion from its 25 reinsurers. So our federal agencies take out these uh, bonds called catastrophic bonds or catastrophe bonds When man controls the weather, when our federal government has funded the technology to control the weather, when our military can control the weather with its technology, and you have federal agencies taking out catastrophe bonds, and then they get hit, or an area gets hit with a catastrophe, and then the federal agency is collecting off of the bonds that they took back. All of this is just a giant scam against the American people. They pay for these bonds with American taxpayers. They collect after the catastrophe. The American public are picking up the bill to pay the approved claims. The insurance companies 
don't pay out anything. This is the, the National Flood Insurance Program under FEMA. They have insurance companies. People go to a private insurance company. They get an agent. They pay their premiums to the insurance company. When they have uh, something happen, the, the insurance company sends out the inspectors. They believe that their insurance company is a private insurance company. They believe that if they're approved, if their claims are approved, it's the insurance company paying it out, and it's not. It's the American taxpayers. FEMA controls the National Flood Insurance Program. These insurance companies, they get paid fees and expenses by the American taxpayer. The insurance companies take a third of Americans' premiums and send off two-thirds to FEMA. They keep a third. The inspectors that Americans believe the insurance companies are paying for, it's the American taxpayers who pay the inspectors who go inspect your homes. If the insurance company is sued, it's the American taxpayers that pay the attorneys the fees and expenses of the lawsuit, not the insurance company. All of that money comes from FEMA. Now, when you have that kind of knowledge, you cannot see your government as anything but a fascist government that has merged with corporations, that has merged with industry, the insurance industry. <laughs> the 8.1 billion that was collected in donations and the federal government handing over I don't know how many billions to, to Texas because of Harvey, that money is not being used to help the individuals who are victims of Harvey. That money is going towards the, the creation of the mega region, the Texas Triangle mega region under United Nations Agenda 2030. So yes, Houston's mayor Well, unfortunately, these encampments where the homeless are living, now they're having havens of criminal activity, they're public health hazards. The city will do a deep cleansing of both camps next week to prevent the spread of disease. Yes, Americans homeless. Now regarded as what? The undesirables. There were once people who had lives. What happened? What happened? Schizophrenic, mentally ill, crazy people, just can't keep up. No, it's the policies coming out of the federal government, policies coming out of state governments, local governments, that create this problem and families and communities broken. The number one problem in America is the family. We would not have so many homeless if families took care of one another. So the homeless population is rising. It's certainly rising after our fires in Northern California it's the first time the number of homeless people has grown since 2010. In Los Angeles, homelessness is up 26%, fueled by high housing prices. Sorry about my computer. You're eating 
25 years old and I just don't know if they can rebuild. I mean, so many family heirlooms I've bought my whole life. I'm going to inherit these someday. This is what I'm going to pass down to my kids. Oh God, I can't. This All was your life savings and work. Only eight oh, weeks ago. Years is gone. Since we've lived here ten years, I never thought that uh, Santa Rosa would uh, have a fire like this and uh, and we would lose everything. You know how many of you came to my house and shared shared loop. Shared our beautiful view and our beautiful sky. But this is it. We're trying to find with that which house is on earth. I was about about twelve and um my one dog, she's really alert to things. She started barking and just wanting me to check on stuff. It was really windy. I went out front, wind was blowing, ashes coming down. Um, she grabbed my keys, my truck, and my dog, and took off. I'm just glad to be here. Glad to have my dogs. You know, you can replace the stuff, but life, life's most important. So. Okay, so... Uh, this is happening now in Southern California, and yeah, we have an awful lot of Americans who are just clueless in regards to what is happening here. Um, unfortunately, we have a lot of Americans who refuse to do any kind of research to find out about the geoengineering, will not acknowledge these chemtrails, all of the chemicals and the heavy metals that make fires far more incendiary, and they do not understand that this is deliberate, the deliberate destruction of the United States to bring about the New World Order and to establish the United Nations Agenda 2030 plan to have only mega regions, 11 of them in this country, move people out of areas. You create a tremendous amount of destruction. Most people cannot afford to rebuild. Most people will find that they are having to move into those cities within the mega regions into the stack and packs where they will be far more controlled. So do I still have feelings when I listen to people who have lost everything? Of course I do. Of course I do. But, yeah, there is this, you know, we deserve what we get, and if we remain ignorant, then, then we, well, willfully ignorant. And, yes, Americans now are choosing to remain ignorant. Then we get what we sow. So, unfortunately, because they still are in the minor uh, majority, we get to suffer. We get to suffer the consequences, all of us. You know, and I think about those New Agers. Oh, you, you design and create your own reality as if the collective does not create a reality that we all have to live. It is such unbelievably stupid, childlike thinking. So we have a housing crisis. We have a surge of homelessness. Yeah, why? Because of the, uh, because of the fires. And there are so many people who now are homeless, children homeless after the fires. And there are so, California, California is, uh, this, by the way, is a New York Times article, and I only kept it in because you could probably get it, but I can't. I, 
I'm not paying for a subscription to the New York Times. I gave them enough of my money throughout my lifetime. But this article is California Fires, Housing, Shortage, but it talks about the school children who are now homeless because of they not having homes due to the fires. So California is the nation's state that has the toughest, the strictest environmental and building regulations. All homes, they have these laws, new regulations, that homes must be retrofitted with sprinklers, a sprinkler system. Now, it's not just coming to those who are building new homes. It's coming to everybody, regardless of whether or not your home has been destroyed. The zoning laws. The zoning laws in Santa Rosa and areas that were affected by the farming do not permit, uh, did I say farming? I'm sorry, fires. They don't permit people to live in RVs and mobile homes. So if people want to rebuild on their own property, there are laws that prohibit they living in an RV. Those laws need to be repealed. Permits, the, the protracted processing of permits is long even when no catastrophic event occurs. But when you have catastrophic events, and this, for all of them, whether it's flooding or fires or tornadoes, whatever, you have a lack of inspectors. So it takes a much longer time, especially when you have over one million homes flooded in Houston and the surrounding areas. When you have how many homes were destroyed in these fires? Tens of thousands? Hundred thousand? I don't know. But when you have so many homes now and you have so many uh, contractors that need permits to even begin to rebuild, this takes a much longer time. So what do the people do? When they have property, they want to rebuild on their property, but they can't afford the extremely high rents. And they have laws that say you can't live in an RV or a mobile home on your property as you're rebuilding. I'm just pointing out all of what occurs. Well, actually, just some of what occurs when you go through something like this. And then you have an awful lot of people who have to live the unfortunate reality that their families are not there for them. The hazardous, hazardous cleanup. We have the EPA, the Army Corps of Engineers. They have their teams that are doing the removal of toxic material from the fires. And it's a historic cleanup. And they're saying that people won't even begin to rebuild until the spring because, well, the EPA and the Army Corps of Engineers, they got to clean up all of that toxic material. But then you also have the expense of rebuilding. And then you also have to deal with the soaring lumber prices. That's right. They are facing serious hurdles. No, it is very difficult to recover when you don't have anyone to turn to and you don't have the money anymore. And so many Americans have fallen right smack into that crevice, crevice where they have no savings and now working at jobs that just enable them to pay their bills.
it it truly is um, when you realize the staggering number of Americans who have faced their homes being foreclosed upon, who have faced the loss of a job and not being able to find employment that matched the job that they lost, that matched, you know, the lifestyle. They can't sustain the lifestyle. So many have gone homeless just from the loss of jobs from their homes being foreclosed upon, which was brought about deliberately as well. The fraud conducted by banks, uh, or committed by banks, yeah, under the Obama administration, they would not prosecute those bankers who were committing fraud because it would hurt the economy. And we all sat back and let that happen. So, when you face this kind of circumstance in America, 2017, with everything so much more expensive, when you face cities and local governments saying that you'll have to rebuild in accordance with the international codes, retrofitting homes, raising homes, putting all the very expensive materials that they claim will prevent fire from coming into your home, specific screens that will block out burning embers, And you can read about all of the other retrofits, the new materials that they will want people to build with. How are people to recover? The only way that people can survive now is if communities really come together and really just sit down and rethink how they're living now and what they can do to uh, do things differently and help one another. Yes, I am going to put down below my PayPal address or name my smilingrocks at gmail.com. I, as long as I am alive, want to build up a pool of donations to help subscribers in particular survive survive what they are the circumstances that they fell into so if you can donate anything I thank you now a dollar five dollars something many people are <laughs> many many people are really struggling and please do not think get rid of that invincibility that you've got within yourself or that normalcy bias because they are wanting to destroy all of us. So if you think that you will not encounter your home being deliberately burned to the ground, if you think that you won't encounter having your home flood because, well, your homes are not in a floodplain, do some research to find out how many Americans have had their homes flooded. They did not have flood insurance because they were not in a designated floodplain and they had their homes flooded. When man controls the weather, well, we are all vulnerable to whatever man wants to do.